Go. Hi, my name is Heidi Hafer, and I am doing a video on Watermelon Mosaic Virus 2. And uh, it is economically important because it can be spread to between 160 to 170 different species from 23 to 27 different families. Um, the different host plant species that they have are like cucumbers, watermelon, and um, legumes also. And the bug that actually spreads watermelon mosaic virus is an aphid, and there are, are around 29 to 42 different species that can actually spread it from plant to plant. And because it being so widespread, it is a very sporadic virus, but the widespreadness actually can cause great economic loss for farmers due to the amount of species that can be infected by the virus. And when you look more like a disease triangle of it, you're going to get um, the host, which is the host plant, which would be like cucumbers or watermelon, and then you can have the pathogen, which is the virus, which is watermelon mosaic virus too, and also that if you have a climate that's a temperate climate and a time of year that usually is at the beginning and the ending of the growing season, the virus has been found to flourish best in temperatures between 65 to 105 degrees Fahrenheit. So when I was reading it says that most um, spread can usually happen between March to May and between October to November, so it is actually a large amount of time. And it's transmitted um, from host to host by aphids um, because the aphids actually uh, stick their probes into a, into a weed that actually has the virus in it and they can transfer it from that weed into a watermelon plant in a very small amount of time. Usually it can be between 20 to 30 seconds if they just probe the plant and move from one plant to the other. And since it goes with such speed, in, the virus actually um, can cause a wide range of effects on the plant. Uh, it causes like a mosaic pattern on the leaves and the fruit, which I am going to show you right here. The mosaic pattern on the fruit, as you can see, makes it so that you're unable to actually sell the fruit if it goes to this point. And also there are the mosaic patterns that they do on the leaves that the leaves, these ones here are just showing the mosaic pattern, but it actually can crinkle them up and make them actually not a viable plant. And it also can deform fruits actually to the point that they're not be able to be used in any way. Uh, the effects caused are dependent usually on the stage of the plant. If the plant is younger and it gets infected, Usually it will not bear fruit sometimes at all, or the fruit will be so deformed that they can't use it. And when it's, of course, older, it has a lot less chance because the virus does not spread as much through the plant. And I found that the best management that they said for controlling watermelon mosaic virus is by getting uh, seeds, that, seeds and plants that are resistant to the virus. They have found... There's a range that actually are resistant in squash, they found, but in watermelon itself, they have had a hard time actually finding plants that are resistant to watermelon mosaic virus. And uh, another thing that they said is to try to remove the weed species that are around any of the crops so that they don't have the chance of a weed that may be infected with it. And another thing they found that was partially helpful was by doing crop rotation using different crops each year and trading out so that you don't propagate it from one year to the other and they did use pesticides but they found that pesticides are not a viable source because they're expensive because you'd have to pay day after day and since the virus itself actually spreads so fast with aphids that you could actually have the virus spread to almost the whole field and just kill the aphids right after they had 
actually infected the whole field. But the good thing is that we are doing much research and hopefully we'll be able to find more resistant strains to actually fight this virus. And thank you for everything.